Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to discuss the NES architecture. So with that said, let's do this. Hey guys, a quick disclaimer before we start. I just finished recording all the parts and I noticed it's over an hour long. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide, divide out this video. So you're going to make into multiple parts. So it's going to be video 2A, 2B, 2C. It's going to be the same subject. It's going to be all about the system overview. So it's going to be a little bit shorter videos. I'm going to upload them a little more often since I already have all the material recorded. All I have to do is a short edit. But uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. And let's go back to the main material. All right. So we're going to start the series by going over the... We're going over the NES architecture. It's going to be quite a long video, but there's some prerequisites before we start this video. First of all, you need to do a 6502 programming, which I did cover on this website as well. It would help if you guys know a little bit of assembler as well. But if you don't want to go over my videos, you, you can go over here under this material over here and check it out. It, it does go over the 6502 assembly. If you don't want to do that, you can gladly go to other go to other websites, Google. YouTube has other channels that cover it as well. I believe Old School, old school Cutter does some tutorials on it as well, as well Chibi Akuma or Akuma Chibi does a little bit of 6502 assembly tutorial as well so you might more than welcome to go to other res resources and as long as you learn it's the final it's the final book regardless and the nerdy night mirrors was actually written by peter parker aka bunny boy and some additional materials by meadow slime i, I believe he did some of the sounds over here but you're gonna go over the main part which cover the basics and in this video you're gonna cover the NES architecture, which is going to be quite a bit long. But with all that said, let's jump right into the material. All right, so let's go over some quick computer information as well, a little bit about the NES information. And we're going to start off with memory size, and we're going to go over quickly over kilobytes. And whenever we say the letter K or the word kilo, it generally means a thousand. And the letter K is example 2K7 again, means the game 2007, it's an NBA game. And the word kilo, if you see uh, other words associated with it, like kilograms, kilometers, uh, kilojoules, it generally means a thousand. So kilograms, a thousand grams, kilojoules is a thousand joules, kilometers is a thousand meters. And so when it comes to kilobytes, a kilobyte is a thousand and twenty-four bytes, a little bit over, but since everything is by the power by two, to the power ten is a thousand and twenty four and two to the power of nine is five hundred and twelve. So we close it, we round it off to a thousand and twenty four. And of course, if you capitalization might matter a little bit sometimes, uh, not often is going to see it, but it might be in kilobits. So a thousand bits instead of a thousand bytes. And if you need to get the bytes out of this bit, you can just divide it by eight since one bit is equivalent. I mean, one byte is equivalent to eight bits. Next up, we have RAM, which means random access memory, meaning that you can't access any memory location at random. So if you have a variable at access, oh, I'm sorry, at memory location 20, that means that you can access at the location running 20 right away. And the opposite of that, so it makes a little bit more sense, would be a sequential access memory. So if you have the same address at location 20 and you are at location zero right now, which is sequential. So you've got to go to zero, one, two, three, four, five, till you got to 20. So that, that would essentially mean sequential. So, so you have a sick time in trying to find the right location, like a cassette tape or a VCR tape, which you trying to fast forward or backwards until you get to the desired location. And one more detail is that RAM is volatile. So uh, as long as you have power on on your machine, all the data is going to remain there. But if the power goes off, you're going to lose all of it. 
We also have ROM, which means read only memory. And as the name implies, we can only read on it. So all the cartridge, the video games have, all the CD, all the DVD ROMs, they're all read only. Pretty much like any document file that somebody sent you that's read only and will never let you change. Well, you can go over the system settings and change that, but it's not supposed to allow you to change the material. All you're doing is really reading the code that's within our binary file and never writing into the binary file. All right, so let's go over some of the NES specific information. Uh, and I'm gonna go over it better. When I, well, I'm just gonna show you guys under the diagram soon. But we have the PRG or the program memory. That's where the code for our game is gonna be placed. Then you're gonna have the char, CIH or character memory. That's all the data that the graphics is contained for the game is gonna be stored. We have the CPU like any other computer since all video game console is a computer. It's the central processing unit, and that's the 6502. You have the PPU, which is the picture processing unit, and that's going to handle all the graphics for the NES, and the APU, which is the audio processing unit, which is going to handle all the sounds for the NES. And it is, since the our CPU is custom-made chip, the APU is actually embedded or inside the CPU itself, the CPU chip. That's something to keep in mind. All right, and this is gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna upload the next video pretty soon. And that's gonna be about our system overview. So if that's said, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.